when services sometime, Obamacare will eventually work out. That's a tough message, but it's the only one the White House has as needs to go to Massachusetts to try to deliver it. Turns out the watchdog overseeing enforcement of the new health care law has no teeth. I'm Vicki Barker. What will happen to you if you fail to get the health insurance required by the Affordable Care Act? Apparently not a lot. The Des Moines Register reports the IRS has been stripped of all the big legal sticks it can usually use, things like putting liens on your paycheck. They could deduct the $95 penalty out of your refund, but only if you're due a refund. Supporters of the law, though, argue most most Americans will want to sign up when they realize that federal subsidies will help them get a good deal. Trustees of NC State University's endowment fund have agreed to sell the 79,000-acre Hoffman Forest near Jacksonville to an Illinois-based agribusiness company for $150 million. The News and Observer of Raleigh reports the money will be placed in endowment funds, and income from its investment will be used mainly to benefit the College of Natural Resources. Conservationists, forestry experts, and landowners oppose the sale. Those groups filed a lawsuit last Last month saying the state was required to consider public input and the potential environmental impact of selling the land, among other issues. A judge denied the groups a temporary restraining order to stop the sale after lawyers from the state attorney general's office argued that the sale wasn't imminent. NC State identifies the buyer as a family-owned farming company. I'm Carrie Davis. A federal appeals court in Virginia is set to hear arguments today on whether North Carolina can offer anti-abortion license plates without making plates available to people who hold the opposite view. You're listening to NCN News. The following is a paid announcement. My name is Jim Hansen, and as a veteran, it was my privilege to serve with the best soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines that America had to offer. After serving my country, I became an operating engineer and worked beside the best trained, skilled craft workers in the world. Now I'm retired, but based on my life experience, I am very concerned that the Keystone XL pipeline is being unnecessarily delayed. KXL will enhance national energy security and create thousands of jobs for my fellow union members. Five years ago, the application was filed with the government for the construction of the Keystone XL pipeline. During that time, four environmental studies have been conducted that came to the same conclusion. KXL would have minimal impact on the environment. The government must stop dragging its feet. Call your senators and ask them to urge presidential approval of Keystone XL. Or, for more information, go to jobscantwait.org. This message was paid for by the Oil and Natural Gas Industry Labor Management Committee. The goblins are invading your neighborhood. Do not be alarmed. We are only little children. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween from Big O Country and KTCBroadcasting.com. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it's Mitchum's Kitchen in Vail. Now open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Sunday. Try their all-you-can-eat pancake special. All you can eat for only $3.99 every day. And don't forget about the big Sunday lunch specials. Every day is a great day to eat at Mitchum's Kitchen in Vail. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Call 704-276-1155 for all of your catering needs, too. The North Carolina Department of Transportation Fleet and Material Unit will conduct a surplus auction and equipment public auction on Wednesday, November 6th at the Cleveland County Fairgrounds from 9 a.m. until the last item is sold. The fairgrounds are located at 1751 East Marion Street in Shelby. All items can be previewed on Tuesday, November 5th from 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. and Wednesday, November 6th from 8 a.m. till 9 a.m. on location. A list of all items to be sold, along with registration and payment requirements, will be on the website, www.ncstatesurplus.com. For further information, contact Peggy Batters at 919-733-2220. Auctioneer William A. Lineberry, license number 214. Today's weather very similar to yesterday's. We'll have a mix of sun and clouds today, breezy at times, and warm temperatures with highs in the low 70s. Partly cloudy and cool overnight tonight, low temperatures in the mid-50s. Then for Halloween, mostly cloudy, breezy, and warm with high temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. It looks like we should stay dry for the trick-or-treaters, maybe a few sprinkles around. For the North Carolina News Network, I'm meteorologist Amy Wilmoth in the Weather Center.
I'm Lon Helton, inviting you to join me as I count down the week's top 30 with Blake Shelton, who has five CMA nominations. They're desperate. That's what it is. You know, I thought last year, as, as a matter of fact, it's like, man, I've, my little 15 minutes is probably up, you know. That's Blake Shelton this week on Country Countdown USA. Country Countdown USA with Lon Helton, Friday afternoons 1 to 4, right here at Big O Country. The leaves are falling and so are the prices at SNR Auto Sales in Shelby. Now is the time to hurry into SNR Auto Sales in Shelby for great fall savings. And down payments start as little as $699. Pick up this week's What's Up Shopper for their selection or visit their website at srautosales.com. And be sure to play their sports trivia question of the week. The leaves are falling and so are the prices at SNR Auto Sales in Shelby. Your buy here, pay here headquarters and the home of the satisfied customer. At McKinney Salinas Power Sports, service is a top priority. Their fully trained staff all ride the products they offer to ensure that you get the best service possible. They have an 18,000 square foot facility filled with a huge selection of motorcycles, four-wheelers, jet skis, and more. On the water, street, or off-road, they do it all. McKinney Salinas Power Sports is your officially licensed Suzuki, Honda, and Kawasaki dealer. 4804 Wilkinson Boulevard. Call 704-824-2787 or online at mscycles.com. Good morning. It's time now for the community profile on WLON, WOHS, and WCSL. This Wednesday, the 30th of October, it's about seven minutes past the hour of 10 o'clock. And Milton Baker, along with co host and executive producer of the community profile, Miss Sandy Alexander. Good morning to you, Sandy. Good morning, Milton. Uh, you look very nice today. I told everybody Thank during you. the swap shop you look very festive, very holiday ish. Well, I wore my orange earlier, so yeah, I wore my red. You had your you had your pumpkin shirt on yep. and stuff, so now you're looking looking mighty fine today. Thank you. And glad you're feeling better too. Oh, I am too. I was afraid the throat thing was happening to me too. Yeah, it's going around here. It's going around here. But uh, anyway, uh, would you introduce our very special guest I'll today? I'll be glad to. Bless her heart. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce my friend Harriet Coffee. And um, when I first asked Harriet to come be our guest, I just assumed uh, that she would call me on the phone because she is from Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And uh, but no, she wanted to come, and that even makes it even more special that you came and took my directions. Bless you. <laughs> and uh, so you got here, and and uh, I'm so glad that you're here. You're such a talented woman, and uh, we're just uh, glad to have you, Milton Baker. Mm -hmm. and, Big fan uh, for a long time. Oh, my phone's going crazy. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a pleasure to be here, Sandy. Thank you so much for inviting me. You know, I see you every year at the Cleveland mm -hmm. County Relay for Life, and I've known you since forever. Actually, I've been in, in the Charlotte market since 1988. I came here to work for uh, Magic 96.1, mm -hmm. Oldies Radio, Magic 96.1. Mm -hmm. Came here from Philadelphia, where I was working at the time. And um, it was 1997 that I was diagnosed with that weird cancer of the appendix. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was off the air for almost a year full time. And 1998, I did my first Relay for Life in Charlotte. And the next year, Cleveland County called me and asked if I would speak. And I've been going ever since. Ever since yeah. And I have met so many good people in Cleveland County and, and here in, in, in uh, uh, Cherryville. Mm -hmm. And it's just been a blessing. It's amazing how something which at the time was so devastating to me mm -hmm. could turn out to be such a true mm -hmm. blessing. I've met so many people through that, including you. Oh. Well, you. Like I said, I knew you before because you worked 
I did. We, we had a Sunday morning mm -hmm. uh, show, and I'd go in at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Then Harriet would take over in Charlotte at 8 a.m. So that was the extent of our working And together. I had never met you. Until we had never met. Yeah. The Relay for Life. Till Relay. And, mm -hmm. uh, but it just seemed like we picked up where we left off, and we've been friends ever since. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. great. And the fact that we are sister cancer survivors, it just makes us even... Mm -hmm. uh, closer to and, you. And you know, I wish you continued success you. Well, in your been survival. Well, this my 36th year. Oh, congratulations. So thank you. You're thank an you. inspiration to me. Oh, oh yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, you're one to me. Um, you're doing what you love to do, and I, I applaud you for that. And you were born in Little Rock, Arkansas. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Born in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, my mom remarried, and my stepdad is from New Britain, Connecticut, mm -hmm. so... I moved to New Britain, Connecticut, when I was a toddler. When I, I was preschool, anyway, and and uh, that's where I grew up. But we would go back to Little Rock every summer mm -hmm. to visit family. And I knew a long time ago that I would probably move back south at some point because the weather is nicer. And mm -hmm. and I always thought everybody was just so friendly. And my best moments were spent with my cousins, you know, just mm -hmm. playing outside. So I have an affection for. Uh, the sunshine below the mm -hmm. Mason-Dixon line. So here I am, but okay. I've 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 worked. Let's see, Connecticut, and uh, Arkansas. I moved back to Little Rock in my in my late twenties, and worked there for a couple of years. Got a job offer and worked in Atlanta for a couple of years. But my goal was New York, number mm -hmm. one market back then. <laughs> If you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Uh -huh. Back then, it meant you were great. That that and it still is the number one market. Mm -hmm. But broadcasting is global now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do this from your home. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do this. And anybody can work in New York and not live in New York. And, and uh, I learned when I got to Philadelphia, which was a really big city, and me having been raised in a small New England town, I'm not a city, city gal. I have to maybe work in the city, but I have to live outside the city. I like trees and <laughs> like to know my neighbors and yeah. <laughs> that sort of oh, yeah. thing. But um, I lived in, in Georgia for a few years and Arkansas for many years. Mm -hmm. So here I am in the Carolinas now yeah. and loving every second of mm -hmm. it. In the radio business, when you start out generally, unless you're a, a super talent like you. <laughs> <laughs> you're <laughs> but, too kind. But, my dear. but when, you, when you start out, uh, generally you, you start out doing a little bit of everything. And it, was that the case for you in broadcasting? You, maybe mm -hmm. you did some news. Maybe you did yes. uh, DJ shifts and things like that, too. Yes, I did. I started out, um, well, I went to the Connecticut School of Broadcasting because I knew what I wanted to do. I just needed connections mm -hmm. and uh, DJs and general managers and, and program directors teach there. Mm -hmm. So halfway through the course, I got a job at an easy listening station. Mm -hmm. in Willimantic, Connecticut, where all I basically had to do was Ella Fitzgerald, mm -hmm. WXLS, mm -hmm. <laughs> Frank Sinatra. <laughs> but, and Sorry. part of the job was to rip and read the news at the top of the hour. And I would rewrite it to make it sound more personable, make it sound more like I got a job offer to be a news person right. in Hartford, Connecticut. And I covered the Capitol when Ella Grasso was governor mm -hmm. and uh, uh, George Athenson was mayor of Hartford. Um, but I always wanted the music end of things. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, a relative, my aunt, my mother's sister, had cancer, and she was alone in Little Rock. So I went down to help out, intending to come back. I took a leave of absence, but I liked it there so much. Mm -hmm. I had only lived in Arkansas as a kid and played and everything, but I had to take care of business mm -hmm. and funeral arrangements and, and whatnot. And, and I just liked the pace and the people and everything about it. So I lived in Little Rock, and I got a job. I applied for a job at KAAY, the music station of the South. <laughs> 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 and they had just hired a woman from Boston to yeah. be their news person. Mm -hmm. So um, they had an opening, part-time, overnight weekends, on their rock station, KLPQ, KLPQ, Little Rock. And they were KQ94. It was a rock station. Mm -hmm. What they call classic rock now, it was new back then. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, okay, I'll do it. Because growing up in New Britain, R&B is my favorite because I grew up with that. But it was a wonderfully mixed environment. So my friends who 
listen to rock music? Well, I did too when I was with them, and they listened to my R&B, so it was a nice, and I knew about rock music, you know, mm -hmm. so I could play the Eagles and Tom Petty and everybody else. I knew all about that. Mm -hmm. So good. Well, they needed uh, a continuity director and a midday personality. Mm -hmm. And it's like, timing is everything. Oh, yeah. Timing is everything. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And I got that, and you're right. I was the midday personality, doing what I love, being on the air, talking to people. But I also was the continuity director, which meant being the liaison between the salespeople and the clients. Mm -hmm. I wrote commercials. I produced commercials, of course, voiced them. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that the other DJs produced the commercials, too. Mm -hmm. Not the production director, but the continuity director. And then later I was a production director. But you're mm -hmm. right. You're right. It's really good to be versatile. It's really good to get all that under your belt. Yeah. You never know when later on it might help you, uh, you know, somewhere down the line. Yes, I have done some news. Yes, I have done some sales. Yes, I've had experience dealing with the public and with the uh, businesses who are our sponsors. So mm -hmm. it's, it's good to have that uh, ability to uh, do a little bit of everything in the business. Now, the business has changed so much, the radio end of broadcasting uh, as well as I guess TV as well but especially radio it's uh, it's more computerized now uh, less people involved on the air I guess you could say and uh, a lot of folks uh, that have been in the business like you and Sandy and I for a, for a long time we remember the quote-unquote good old days you know you had to have live DJs you had to you had hands on your record you had your 45s and so forth but uh, a lot of it's changed, some for the good, uh, and some jobs have been eliminated. But in a lot of cases, especially small market radio, AM stations especially, the uh, technology has actually saved stations that may not even be on the air these days due, mm -hmm. to, due to the way things are going. But uh, uh, any comments on Yes, on that's that? exactly right. I've had this discussion so many times. Uh, and, you know, you think about it. For centuries, technology has been taking jobs, but it makes things easier for us. And like I mm -hmm. said earlier, broadcasting is global now mm -hmm. because of computerization. I mean, I'm looking at this uh, <laughs> high-tech studio here. I mean, you guys are state-of-the-art in here. Mm -hmm. And you can voice track a radio show that runs five or six hours and do that in an hour or so and and uh, a corporation can run that same show, those breaks, for about 12 stations in their chain, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all over the country. Uh, so you can be 12 places at one time and right. never, <laughs> yeah. and like I say, never leave yeah. home if you don't. And it, 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 that technology enables them not to have to pay us as much because well, it's not sure. a that's, live show. That's true, too. <laughs> Imagine if we got live pay for all those 12 stations. <laughs> but, um, uh, and I do voice work I, I have a voicing services business where I do what I've always done commercials mm -hmm. I voice anything that my voice is suited for and my website is harrietcoffee.net and that's where my potential clients can see what I do for them I have demos up there commercials uh, um, I have a promotional video that I just voiced and, and different things like that so mm -hmm. they can see or hear what I sound like and I've done work for agencies all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, I work for Mood Media, uh, which used to be Muzak. Mm -hmm. Well, they're Mood Media now, and I do sessions with them from my house. They're in Austin, Texas, and I do nationally distributed on-hold voice messaging, mm -hmm. in-store announcements. Sometimes the client will ask me to voice an actual commercial for their television or radio spots. Um, they're in Austin, Texas. I do that from my home. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I worked for an FM station where I voiced breaks from my house, and they voice tracked them yeah. on their radio station, and everybody could have sworn I was, you okay. know, right there. Mm -hmm. But that's the wonder of technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, technology has been taking jobs from people for centuries, but... It still creates other jobs, yeah. too, so I don't have yeah. any complaints about that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, 
as long as corporations or whatever the business can profit from having less bodies in the station because technology enables them to do that, mm. then life will go on that way. Mm. You, you just have to, uh, like say, if, if, if it's eliminating live DJs or whatever in the studio, you just have to look at it, as you said, there's other opportunities there with the technology to, to be on more stations, to do more things, and like I say, in some cases, you can do it right from your uh, little studio in your home. You know. And it doesn't have to be an elaborate studio. <laughs> yeah, you you got to eat. you yeah. got to do something, and if yeah. you want to do what you love, you're going to try to work mm-hmm. with the system because the only constant is change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And That's things true. are going to keep changing. Yeah. And people are going to keep making profits with skeleton crews. So... Mm-hmm. Why change that if you're yeah. going to make money from it? <laughs> yep. There you go. Sandy? Yeah. You. I went down the hall. It's been a couple of months ago and uh, making up the bed, matter of fact, when there's mundane things I have to do. And I heard you on the TV. I said, that's Harriet. <laughs> mm-hmm. My husband said, who? <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's Harriet. And I like to kill myself getting down the hall. And there you were on WTVI. Mm-hmm. And I thought... The girl's gone from radio to TV, and <laughs> so I, I got to see you a little bit then. So you're doing TV as well as radio. Um, when I can, sure. Um, that was probably one of their televised fundraisers, mm-hmm. and they'll call when they have a program that relates to what I did either uh, as an oldies personality in the market or uh, when I did uh, uh, a classic hits radio station that had some rock artists Mm -hmm. that may have a music program they're trying to promote as a fundraiser, they'll call me, and I'll do that. And and that's another way that I give back to the community because um, I myself love public television. When my son was growing up, he watched Sesame Street, Mm -hmm. Zoom, and all the good TV shows. So I give back to the community, and, and if they call me, I go willingly and, and just have a wonderful time of it. Yeah. But it's another part of, of what I do. And you know how r- there are so many jobs in broadcasting, not just being uh, on mic or, or on camera. Mm-hmm. And uh, whatever I find that I can do, I'll, I'll try to do it. It's mm-hmm. just a matter of I d- just being confident enough to do it and mm-hmm. try it if you're given an opportunity. Now you mentioned your your training at the Connecticut, at least at School of Broadcasting, the uh, Charlotte School of Broadcasting. You're you're you work with them. Okay, them uh, as well. yeah, you're right. Not that I'm not loyal to my alma mater because the Connecticut School of Broadcasting is also in Charlotte. Oh, okay. But um, I work at the Carolina School of Broadcasting. Mm-hmm. Um, I was contacted by them. Uh, in the early 90s when I was at Magic and and things were so, so, so busy then. I didn't have time to do it and things slowed up when I was uh, downsized from uh, uh, Magic uh, when Clear Channel took it over. After about a year, I was downsized and uh, I had free time and and I started teaching there. If the Connecticut School of Broadcasting had contacted me, Mm-hmm. I probably would have taught there. It was just mm-hmm. a matter of timing. And I love it. I love being there because I like the idea of helping people accomplish their dreams. And, and mm-hmm. these aren't just uh, people out of high school, although there are some there. These are adults mm-hmm. who may want to change their career by choice, or maybe mm-hmm. they were downsized. But mm-hmm. these are adults who are working and uh, they come to class in the evenings, during the day, and I share with them what I know about the industry, plus uh, you know, following the curriculum for the Carolina School of Broadcasting. But there are many, many success stories, many success stories at the Carolina mm-hmm. School of Broadcasting, and it's an accredited uh, uh, community college level yeah. uh, school. So, Some years ago, uh, maybe... 10, 12 years ago when I was doing uh, some hiring of part-time uh, announcers and board operators at the radio station that back in those days, uh, one young lady came to me, and she was very interested in, in the radio business, but she was discouraged 
from taking that course by a, I guess, guidance counselor or someone like that uh, because of, as, as she put it at that point, that point, at that point, they told her it was a dying profession. But I, I don't know. What was the dying profession? Yeah, uh, broadcasting. Really? Broadcasting, radio, yeah. And when was this? Oh, it was probably 10, 12 years ago. Really? Yeah. So uh, I found that statement that, that always, you know, I thought, wow, this young lady, you know, her dream to be on the be on the radio and to be told, you know, mm-hmm. by by yeah. career did, uh, <clears throat> counselor that it was a, a dying profession. Wow. You know? Why did she say that? Because satellite radio was coming on. I, I guess at the time, you know, yeah, things were uh, things were going more computerized at the time, and mm. you know there was more automation, things like that. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I tell the students all the time that, yeah, you're going to hear about downsizings, but there are so many things to do in broadcasting. It's not mm-hmm. just being on the air. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to stay on the air too. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's so many jobs behind the scenes creative things and and uh, a lot of people come to the Carolina School of Broadcasting with the idea of wanting to be on the air but once they're shown all the aspects Mm -hmm. of broadcasting often some go into sales or or Mm -hmm. they might go into uh, production Mm -hmm. on-camera work it's amazing yes. what there still is available to do, yeah. <laughs> even though people think there there aren't that many jobs. But mm. you know, broadcasting isn't the only industry where there are downsizings. Every mm. everywhere there are downsizings. Mm. But sure. as long as the way I see it, as long as human beings like to hear another human being, like to feel, have mm-hmm. the human touch from the radio, and there's always going to be radio because you don't have to look at it. To mm-hmm. hear it and work, you can do lots of things and listen mm-hmm. to the radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, and I'm not knocking television either because I love television too. Mm-hmm. But I love broadcasting radio in particular. Radio has put food on the table, it's put my son through college. It's uh, most of my adult life I've been in radio. Yeah. So I love it. I love mm-hmm. it. Um, I love broadcasting in general. Yeah, it's pretty much for me. Uh, all I've ever done as a as a paying job, you know, pretty much uh, as a living, and uh, it's it's been a great uh, great career. I started in the early '80s, so back then we were still, you know, uh, we were still uh, 45 records and uh, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, commercials were on tape and everything. Now and then, you know, I've gone through the period where the computers have come along, and, and granted, I am no uh, uh, expert at uh, what's going on with these computers sometimes, but I can. I can still navigate my way around mm-hmm. one and, and still manage to, to stay on the air somewhat there. Well, I can see. Look at this. is a great <laughs> studio. You've got everything here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is You, you can you can navigate yeah. your way for sure. Yeah. It's and, like uh, we could push a button and take off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, Sandy, she's uh, you've, you've been in this uh, business a while, too, and you, you've also had other careers too but I you know did. radios it's one of those things once you once you get a little feel for it and a little taste for it it's hard to get it out of your system well it, it is uh jeffrey owens used to work at whs and shelby told me one time he said um once you get it in your blood it's hard to get out and i walked in uh fresh from chemotherapy and i weighed about 90 something pounds when i walked into that station mm. because i had a year to lay in the hospital and think about what I wish I'd done, I didn't, mm-hmm. and that was one of them because I loved music. So when I got enough hair on my head and I d- eyebrows back and all this, I walked in and said, I want a job. <laughs> now, I don't know if I'd be that brazen now, <laughs> but um, I never will forget. He said, tear that copy off the AP machine. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I did, and I went in the back room, and I read, and I came back out, and he was on the phone and talking, and I saw waited, and he said, if you can meet with me every Saturday for a few weeks. And I did, and after that, I was on every Saturday. Did you find, from having your cancer, that you really were more confident to do things that you I hadn't planned on doing? I would have never done that. I would have never. I'd been so embarrassed, but I just marched in there and asked. I thought, well, what's the worst that could happen? He'll say no. Uh, I'll just turn around and go home. I've heard the worst news in my life that I'll ever hear. So what could be 
worth, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but luckily for me, and I've met such wonderful people, mm -hmm. got to meet wonderful people, got to talk to wonderful people. Um, and, you know, uh, I've just enjoyed it. It's been a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just the fact that we're here to tell the story and all other survivors are here to tell the story because there are people younger, stronger, more spiritual maybe, that have gone before us, and here we are. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know why we're here to tell the story, but we are, and, and that's why I try to do things at the Relay for Life. And, and uh, you know, you call me your sister in survival, and we are. I, I call all survivors my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in survival. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I just feel, and I know you do too, that we need to to do something more than our comfort zone allows us to do mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so i'm glad to be here thanks so much for inviting well, me it's our mm -hmm. pleasure to have you here but anyway, we cannot go without me asking how's the grandchildren oh <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started <laughs> I saw, we're friends on facebook and i saw those pictures they are adorable oh my goodness you know my son, Ryan, I used to talk about him on the air a lot, and uh, people still ask me, how's Ryan doing? Well, Ryan, uh, oh, I have lived to see this because my weird cancer of the appendix when I had it had a survival rate of five years. Mm -hmm. So every day is real good to me. And now it's 10 years, but August 8th was my older grandson Trey's fourth birthday and my 16th year of cancer survival. Mm -hmm. So good. this is wonderful. And, and when you ask about the grandkids, it's like my life flashes before my eyes because I got to see Ryan graduate from college, fall in love and get married. And they gave me two beautiful grandchildren. And I'm here to tell that story. So if I had to leave the planet, I'm just as happy as can be because I've seen beautiful yeah. glory days you know and and uh, i just now i i i'm so proud of the grandkids i have trey who's four tristan will be two december 6th and those are two definite times i go to connecticut to visit mm -hmm. visit the family and i have a third grandson on the way august 6th mm -hmm. okay <laughs> for uh. you Oh. <laughs> Life is good. Life is, is wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. Well, I tell you, what, I've, I've I've never met you, but it's it's been a pleasure and a, a oh. joy to to meet you. Well, I've, I've always heard you on the radio, and now I, I can say I, I have met Harriet Coffey. Well, and it's it's been a, it's been a great to have you with us. Tonight. Thank you, thank you for having me here too. You, you do a fine job, fine well, job. I was listening coming in. <laughs> I was afraid of that. It, got <laughs> kinda, it gets kind of crazy sometimes on the swap shop. You never know what's coming up. No, but, uh, great but, job. Uh, I appreciate those kind words, Sandy. Anything you'd like? Well, to say? I can't say anything more, but see you in May. <laughs> and that's the only time I get to see her, but. Uh, at least I get to see you today, and we can have some time and talk, maybe. And Well, you said uh, we were going to go out to lunch. Yes, we are. Okay. You know, Mama ain't miss no meals. Uh, mama, this mama don't either. <laughs> this mama don't miss no either. So, uh, but thank now, you, Harry. Now, speaking of that, when, when you go out and about and you, you order at a restaurant, does anyone ever say, are you who I think you are or something like that? All the you, time. You get recognized by your voice. All the time. Um now, I haven't been on Magic, on Oldies Radio, Magic 96, since uh, November of 2001. Mm -hmm. So how, what's that, 12 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 12 years. And that's where most people know me from. Mm -hmm. um, a younger audience knows me from uh, another station that I worked on um, uh, recently. Well, May of last year was my last day there, a uh, classic hits radio station. But, yeah, it happens all the time. And... I can go into a gas station, and I don't usually pay inside. I usually do the credit card, but sometimes I... So I went in one time, and uh, I said, thanks, I hope you have a great weekend. And he hey. looked at me, <laughs> and he said, 
are you Harriet Coffey? <laughs> I said, yes, I am. <laughs> and that's uh, that's good for the old ego. <laughs> yeah. I get I get that a lot at my little antique store. I, I get people, now I know you. I feel like I know you. Mm-hmm. And it's they know my voice, man. Oh, you got a great voice. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But some people pick up, you're the guy on the radio, but others is just, I, I think I know you. Mm-hmm. Did you do you live so-and-so? Did you go so-and-so to school? I know you. <laughs> it's, uh, they, and uh, they, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Well, it's, it's just been wonderful. I, I, please come back again. I would love to. Anytime yeah. you invite me, I'll be here yesterday. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That's wonderful. All right, Thank Sandy. you, Harriet. You, you did a great job, oh, Harriet, Harriet, Harriet here oh, and uh, everybody this week. And as always, you, you, you put these programs together and schedule all the folks. What's coming up next week? Have I put you on the spot? Uh, well, no. Uh, Operation Christmas Child is having a kickoff, and we're going to have the regional director here mm-hmm. on Monday, okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, or pending. Okay, got some things uh, in the works there. In the brew. You always have somebody here, though. I, I always do. All right. And, and, hey, you didn't talk about uh, your, uh, let's talk about your CD oh, before we go. I, Mention that. Very quickly, I made a CD. That's something that I always wanted to do anyway, but I made one for my mother last Christmas, and it sounded bland and blah. So I took it to a friend, and he put an orchestra with it. So now I went one step further, and I've had it produced, and it's coming out in a couple of weeks. But I made you a copy of my copy. Oh, thank for you. For you to take home. Thank you and so I'm, much, Sandy. That's something, you know, that uh, I've, I was on my bucket list to do. Oh. Uh, so I, I did it, and uh, I had a lot of pictures made. And somebody said, well, save that for your next CD. I said, Lord, let me get through this first one first. But uh, I want you to have that remembered me by. Thank you so much, Sandy. And you know what? This is testament to the fact that you are doing what you want to do, and you're inspiring people. You inspired me here. You know, like you you. said, what's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. That's wonderful, Sandy. Thank you so much. You're welcome, my friend. You're welcome. Uh Two wonderful ladies today Thank on our you. program. All right. Thank you, folks, for listening in. hope you've enjoyed. Please join us again next time. And as always, if you have any uh, persons or topics uh, that you think would make a good program, let us know. I'll turn it over to Sandy, and she'll go find them and get them on the air. I'll try. You always do. Except Roger Staubach. Uh, we're still working on Roger Staubach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you, folks, next week. satellite radio slogan right if you're good at something never do it for free we have a different idea we fight for freedom radio the way it should be free big o country whs shelby wlo in lincoln wcsl charitable gastonia here's what's up in cleveland gaston and lincoln